Hi guys, welcome to an unboxing video for Carbon Grey. Now, I've talked about Carbon Grey a few times. I backed the Kickstarter, and I'm very glad I did. It's a very nice game. Although I've had my problems with the way they handled the shipping, because it was a ridiculous amount of money they wanted. And the way they asked for it, I felt, was pretty badly handled. But anyway, the game itself looks absolutely lovely. Now, for an unboxing video, the thing that's going to be missing in this is the box. Because I received the box yesterday, and it was absolutely massive. So way too big for me to fit under this camera. I was going to have to do another shed video like I did with HeroQuest. But inside the box was a massive amount of packing chips. Because what I got wasn't actually that much. So rather than have an absolute mess and a huge box and have to set up somewhere else, here I present the contents of the box. So here's everything that was inside. As I said, they sent an absolutely massive box. So, starting off at the top, we've got the set of 12 custom dice. With the ones for fails, marked with this uh, rune. And the digits in Roman numerals. It's very interesting, they're a nice selection. I like the white marbly effect of this one. Very nice. These are almost sort of blood, with red through them. A very nice set of dice indeed. Next up, we have a pin badge. Standard connect, uh, attachment at the back. Now, I've only just started reading through the comics since I got it yesterday, so I don't know what this symbol stands for. And the badge itself looks okay. It's a little cheap. But it appears to be sort of bronzed metal. It's fairly nice. Perhaps once I've read the comics, I'll really get into this rune and want to put it on things because it means something really important. But at the moment, don't know. Next, we have a coin. If I open this up, it's one of those plastic envelopes with a plastic sticks to itself. Ah, open up. It's got a Germanic type symbol on one side. On the other side, it's got that rune, Where Lies Your Destiny. And various runes around it. Now, that's really quite nice. I'm a bit of a sucker for coins. So I've got a few of them up on my sort of display shelf. And this is going to be added to them very nicely indeed. Next, they've sent us a patch. Some kind of robot turret or walker or something like that. Canon lathe. Um, it's kind of glossy, sort of silky material. Yeah, very pretty. And next up, we have some art prints. Now these are very nicely uh, printed out. The materials are textured, just white on the other side. But some very nice art prints indeed. Now, I'm not sure what I'd do with these. These are probably just go on a shelf. Um, I don't tend to put art prints up on display anywhere. But they are nice enough. And that was part of the um, stretch goals. And I much preferred an adventure or something like that. But I'll happily accept some art prints. Very nice indeed. We've got a battle map. Or double sided. On one side we've got a winter forest, which very much sets, is the tone of fighting the war in Europe, even a steampunk one. And then on the other side we've got sort of buildings and that, and a shell pot battlefield. Um, I don't tend to use miniatures, but that is quite nice. A couple of pieces of white paper. Another art print, separate. And then we're actually reaching the three main things. First of all, we've got the Dungeon Master screen. Now, I much prefer Dungeon Master screens which sit in this aspect. I definitely prefer taller Dungeon Master screens rather than wider ones. I also prefer four panels rather than three panels. But this is a nice enough three panel. 
Um, the problem with the D6 rules in Star Wars is they are such simple rules that a lot of information on the Dungeon Master screen is not actually needed. So we've got character creation here. Um, vehicle damage, catastrophic damage, wild die results. And then we've got things like combat sequence and some basic weapons and maneuvers and stuff here. Now, character generation really doesn't need to be on a Games Master screen. But again, the D6 system is so simple. I would have probably preferred if they printed it a bit larger on the outside. It's very pretty indeed. I can see that being incredibly useful. Next, we've got the graphic novel. Now, I've started reading this. I'm about, what? A third into it, if you can make out where my bookmark is. Um, I'm not finding the story absolutely gripping. Uh, lots of things are happening without being explained, but perhaps as I get further into the story, things will happen. Um, it's a very nice book indeed. Something I noted, both this and the game book itself, is they've got rounded corners, so you're not going to stub the corners on things and blunt them and ruin the books. It's very nicely thought out. The artwork inside goes from old style comic book, because that's what this part's supposed to be, through to the main part of the story, which is incredibly well drawn. I do like the art a lot. Uh, steampunk setting. Some absolutely fantastic stuff in here. And if I get through to a certain portion of it, it's got music sheets, we've got kids' drawings, which are important to the story, and we've even got a section which is like Hergé's Adventures of Tintin. Um, I don't know how common those are in America, but they're very common in libraries over here. Um, I kind of grew up taking them out of libraries and reading through them. It's very nice stuff indeed. As I said, I haven't read enough of the story to say whether I'm going to love it. And finally, we have the role-playing game itself. As I said, the corners are rounded, and inside, every page is rounded as well. So we're not going to absolutely ruin it flicking through it. It's very well thought out. The presentation is absolutely first class. The print quality is absolutely lovely. This really is a nice-looking book. The print's large, makes it very easy to read, and um, does make you feel like you're not getting as much for your money as you might. But I'm torn as to whether that's a problem or it's a benefit. I like the fact that this is going to be an easy book to flick through. It's going to be easy to find things, easy to see it, without peering over, the, <laughs> over your nose, trying to find little rules. Very nice indeed. Um, flicking through, it's got lots of the comic book art. Everything laid out very well. Their presentation is absolutely brilliant, I have to say. Um, the carbon grey registration cards, so the character uh, sheets, are made out like registration cards from during World War One. You know, the person's name written in and various pieces of information. I've seen from my grandparents and things, their ration cards and old documents like that, which look very much like this. We've got a choose your own adventure section, as was common with the D6 games. We go through the combat section. Gears and weapons. Lots of stuff for all the uh, factions. We've got the vehicles. Um, different illustrations, so the warplanes over here, airships, war bombers. That looks very much like the Russian Ukraine plans. Wheeled war wagons, such cool steampunk type vehicles. A standard World War One tank, but with what looks like a railgun type thing on top. The lightning cannon, that's what it is. Very nice indeed. Ordinary vehicles, detailing the world. The 
coins. So showing the actual coin I was given one of. So there's Detailing the World. Then we're on to Running the Game. So um, how to Games Master. Always a nice section to have in. Explaining how the different abilities work. Enemies, allies and extras. So we've got sort of standard enemy soldiers. Just people you can skirmish with. Characters that your Game Master can just pull out when they need somebody. Stone Demons, Dragon Wraiths, Haunts, Marching Dead. And then we've got Episodes. So different short adventures. All the little children. Ashes to ashes, to do more harm. Got adventure hooks and things here. Archetype templates, so the different types of characters you might want to play. A devil dog, a cavalry scout, a brash dogfighter, aspiring occultist, dissenting apostates, fervent revolutionaries, learned scholars, royal operatives. Loads and loads of different ones to choose out. Stoic war horse. And a full version of the character sheet. And another copy of the map. So that's what I got in my carbon grey book. And as you can see, if I tilt it towards the sunlight, you can see the logo itself is gloss, but the cover's matte. I think it's going to be quite hard wearing. So I am very pleased with the contents of the box, I have to say. They've really delivered the goods. Um, I've had my problems with them, but they've made me smile today in providing me with something very, very nice. Anyway, I think I've witted on about what's in here for quite long enough, so thank you very, very much for watching. But as always, most of all, you look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.